just through the mantle. But see, but God led him there to his next place, to his next place, to his next place. And God is not a respecter of persons. Amen. We have the angel with an A inside of us, the Holy Spirit. Amen. And he will lead us if we provoke him not and don't move to the left or to the right. Because sometimes he might be saying, go over here to this place right now. That's why he's talking about interrupting our patterns. Amen. In this past week, there's been more pattern interruption. Right. Amen. I'm, I'm telling you, even when Monique called, she interrupted my Saturday pattern to go to Baruch Hashem. When we went to Baruch Hashem, I'm going, okay. And I, I, it was my pleasure to go. It always is. But my patterns don't allow for me to go very often. And so I changed my patterns. I'm going, I know this for a reason. I know you've got a confirmation there. And he did. Yes, he did. For exactly where we are at Amen. as a people. Amen. And there were seven of us there. And they all came back with a good report of confirmation. Amen. Did anybody say, it, it, None of that made us look and go, ooh, we're scared. Uh -huh. Were any of y'all scared? No. no. It gave you hope, encouragement, confirmation that oh, the yeah. Lord our God is with us. Amen. If we will look Amen. past the giants, Amen. past the giants, because the rabbi said there are giants in every land. Amen. Think about it. Amen. I said, oh, that's good. We, we're so busy, we, we always think we're just going to go right into that the blessing of the Lord is going to be easy. You think the enemy is going to give up anything to us? There's always giants in the land that God has prepared. Always. Always. But we're not to look at the giants. We're to look at what God said. Amen. Noah's window. Okay? It's a promise. If he said it's yours then we better get the step in to go take it. Amen. That's why I told Pastor today, I said, baby, we're well able. Yes, we, are. we are well able. Bring yes, it on. We are. We're well able. And you say, well, you're only, you're only 12 people right here. What the pastor always say? What's the word always say? If, if there is a multitude, God always dwindled it down. Yes. Always. Mm -hmm. Always. We are victorious whether we 12 or whether we're two. Amen. Always, when the, the leader of our host is Yeshua. Always. Always. He always causes us to triumph. Always. If we don't quit and lay down. But I say to Pastor, yeah, we well able. Okay. Um, dreams. Hallelujah. <laughs> um, when we go to sleep at night, our spirit is awake. Our body shuts down. Our emotions shut down. Our brain shuts down. We are at, the scientists say it's so near the death state. We are right on the edge between conscious and unconscious. But our spirit man is alive. I mean, because even when we die, the spirit, the spirit is still alive. Okay, so when we sleep, God can go right to the spirit. That's why we don't understand a lot of things that are in our dreams a lot of times. Because he's, he's speaking in his language, not your language. But sometimes, y'all, you just know, just the same way with when God is speaking when we're awake, and you go, I don't understand it with my head, but I, I understand it in my spirit. It's like deep is calling unto deep. Just like I've stood up here before and I said, I don't know why I cry every time I talk about the Jews. I, I, don't, I don't know what that's all about. But it's like deep is calling unto deep. Amen. Spirit is, is ministering to spirit. It's bypassing the brain and going right to the spirit. That's what's happening in the dream. It's, it's bypassing your thought process and your emotion process. And it, it's actually it's healing your emotion. It can heal your emotions. And... Um, Proverbs 20 and 27 says the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord and the candle searches all the inward parts. That's in the, you ever heard that scripture? It's the candle of the Lord 
The Holy Spirit searches all of those. I think that's in Corinthians too. It says he that searches the mind knows what is the, the mind of God. Because with your spirit, Holy Spirit is searching all those inward parts to see that which needs help. It needs help. It needs help. Okay? Uh, David called it the inner part. And he said in Psalm 50, 51 and 6, he said, in my inward parts, in that hidden part, it's hidden. You don't see your spirit. You don't see it. In the hidden part, you shall make me to know wisdom. You shall make me to know wisdom. When Catherine was telling me her dream, that was a pretty dream. I mean, it was all elaborate and everything. And he made her to know the wisdom of that. He made her to be able to interpret. And you say, well, does she have a gift? Maybe. But he made her to know exactly what it was. And when she said it to me, I'm going, yeah, that, that sounds right to me. It sounded scripturally right. And see, that's the thing. Dream interpretation should be from the Bible, not from the Internet. Come on. Right. Not from the Internet. Amen. Okay? Because there is, there is enough uh, evidences in the Bible, you don't have to be looking in, into soulish psyche areas, soulish areas. These are spirit things that he's dealing with. Now, not every dream is a spirit dream. Not every dream. But you know the ones that are because you usually remember them. They usually... They usually um, Yes, you usually remember them. In 1 Peter, we're just talking about that hidden part where God makes us to know wisdom. In 1 Peter 3 and in 4, Peter calls it the inward man of the heart. Down in there. Down in there. That's why the scripture says, guard your heart. Guard that part, that inward part. For out of it come the issues of life. Out of it come the issues of life. Um, something that I, I, I wanted to, to say, and I don't know where this is, but I need to say it quick because time is over. But uh, just in talking about, and we'll pick it up next week, dream interpretation. Let me just say uh, reoccurring dreams. And you may tell Jeremy this if you so choose. But uh, have any of you ever had reoccurring dreams? Yes. Yes. Whether it's either the same dream or... Uh, the same subject matter. Jeremy said he's had the same dream for all his life. And I wanted to go, well, then, well, don't you, why don't you listen? You know? The same dream for all your life? You know how old Jeremy is? You know, but a recurring dream is where God is inviting you to pay attention. Okay. It's like, how many times I got to put this in your head? Pay attention and change. Pay attention, pay attention, and to deal with something. Sometimes it's a hurt, sometimes it's a fear. Um, it, it can move. hurt or fear, that's usually what it is, hurt or fear. And God keeps giving it to you while you're knocked out so that you can deal with this. Let it go. Let it go. If, if it kept coming up in my mind, I'd be wanting to go, why does this keep coming up in my mind? Well, deal with it, and then it won't keep coming up in your mind. Give it to God. God, when you have reoccurring dreams, God is trying to tell you something. Pay attention to this. Let me help you with this. Let me heal you of this, and we can go on. Get understanding. Get wisdom here, and then we can move on. God speaks once, yea, twice, and then he puts you to sleep. Because okay. you ain't hearing what I'm saying. So he gives you recurring dreams, okay? Pizza does not give you recurring dreams. God gives you recurring dreams. Although your nutrition or lack thereof can make you have wild, what you eat or what you drink can make you have wild dreams. Your hormones can make you have crazy, crazy dreams. But you know when you wake up, especially when you wake, when I call them waking dreams, when you're dreaming and then all of a sudden your eyes open and you remember, the waking, God is, when you remember it, God is 
trying to tell you something. Now, if you forget it before you get out of the bed, then you're just dealing. You know, you're just dealing. You're just balancing out. You're just it, growing. And let me just say before I close for today, because um, we're going to talk about Joseph's dream, Pharaoh's dream. Everybody had a dream. Joseph in the Old Testament, Joseph in the New Testament. Everybody had a dream. And Joseph told the Pharaoh, when the Pharaoh, when he was uh, interpreting Pharaoh's dream, he then, Pharaoh, had a dream. And Joseph went to God and got the interpretation. He didn't go to the internet. He, didn't, he said, let me go to the wise men. Let me go to the wise men and see let, what they can come up. No, he went to God to give the interpretation. And he said, when God speaks once, it's one thing. When he speaks twice, it is established. And you say, well, how do you know that? Yeshua said that in the New Covenant. Moses said that in Deuteronomy. In the voice of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. If you hear it once here, this is waking or sleep. If you hear it once here, you hear it twice here, and I'm not talking about voices of the word. I'm talking about God speaking to you. You better start paying attention. That's why when everything I turn on, turn off, was talking about Elijah, still talking about Elijah. I'm going, what the heck is the deal with Elijah? God, the spirit of God is trying to say, play closer attention. Closer. We hadn't even begun to open up the days of Elijah. And even began. We're just talking about a widow woman and provision right now. But the Spirit of the Lord has a lot more to say just about the days of Elijah. Because if you look in Malachi, it, it talks about the last thing he talks about before the new covenant. Elijah coming. And we'll get into that another time. But um, hallelujah. We'll continue since my time is up. It's up, up, up. Um,